This is Ra Hokum here for Punch Out Boxing. I am delighted to be speaking to Baz Oosterwegel from all the way across the North Sea in the Netherlands somewhere, I believe. Or have you already made it? Yeah. No, I'm flying tomorrow. Uh, be, be in the Netherlands now in Tilburg. That's where I live. Okay. Tilburg. Uh, well, that's uh, is that somewhere right up on the North Coast somewhere? No, it's in the south. It's uh, near the border of Belgium, so it's all the way in the south. Okay, so not even near to the heartlands of Amsterdam and Feyenoord. No, yeah. no, no. It's like a far. It's like one, one, one and a half hour drive. So it's not too bad. It's like one hundred kilometers. Okay. On south, I live. But uh, very much a small town boy compared to <laughs> the big city here in London. Yeah, that's right, man. It's a small town. Small town, definitely smaller than London. London's very big. Ah, uh, indeed. Well, Baz, um, you're known to fight fans uh, in particular because at the end of last year, you put on an epic fight against uh, one of Matchroom's top prospects, George Lidard, at the O2. Um, yeah, since then, uh, yeah, what have you been doing? I know you've had a couple of comeback fights um, just to keep busy. Uh, yeah, what, what, what's yeah. going on? Yeah, after the fight, I took a little time off. Just to uh, have some rest. And then I wanted to fight again. I fought again in January in the York Hall. Put on a good fight. Then I fought again in March. It was a bit of a shit fight, bullshit fight, bullshit decision. I got the draw. I need to get the win. But uh, sometimes that's uh, how boxing works. Mm -hmm. And now I have the, um, a great opportunity from um, to fight on the card for Nielsen Boxing Team 14. To fight against a good opponent. I'm really excited to train real hard for this. It was my longest camp ever. My focus is good, so I'm putting on a mass mass class performance this time, and yeah. I have to, I have to, I have to show everybody what I'm made of, and I think that's the time. Yeah, as you said, uh, is a great opportunity. That's on the Promoters Collide show uh, against Ollie Edwards, um, and it's your first eight rounder. So here in the UK, once you fought an eight rounder, you're in the picture for titles. So I guess both of you will be looking to re really make a statement. Have you uh, yeah. seen much of Oli? Uh, um, of course, I watched a unbeaten. couple of his fights. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, he's unbeaten. Yeah, I watched a couple of his fights. I think he's a good fighter. But uh, we uh, made a game plan. We trained uh, very hard for this fight. So I think this Saturday is going to be a re really, really good fight. One to look forward to. Yeah, tell tell us uh, how how did uh, it come about that uh, you got this fight on this massive card? Uh, was it Nielsen who approached you about it? Yeah, it was Nielsen who approached me about it. I sent uh, Mark Nielsen a message if I can fight again on this card, and then he came with a couple of fights and it didn't work out. And then he's like eight weeks ago, he sent me a message and said, "I got a fight for you," and I saw it and I was like, "Yeah, man, let's go!" Like good fight, like lots of time to to prepare for it. And was like immediately when I saw it, I was like excited. So I was, was like, "Yeah, man, let's go, perfect." So in the past, you have fought sort of between middle and super middle. Um, what weight is this uh, fight going to be um, scheduled? This is super middle, super middle weight is going to be this fight. Okay, do, do you think that is actually your your best fight weight? If you're going to talk about champion, I think super middle. I feel I feel strong as a super middle. I try middleweight, and I think yeah, I felt a bit a bit like um, that. My power is a bit gone. I think I'm at the strongest at super middle. And I think that's the best best weight for me. Okay, that's fab because I know Oli, uh, that's his preferred weight as well. Um, yes, yeah. are you going to be looking to uh, pursue? Sort of titles at the super middleweight uh, limit. If you get, to yeah, that. of course, of course, of course. If I win this fight, I hope there's like, there come a lot of uh, great opportunities next. But first, I need folks on this fight. Give this fight my all, and then see what's next. Uh huh. So you've been doing your training camp uh, back there in Holland. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah but what what's it like for getting decent sparring there? We have a great team. We have a great team. I train at Den Haag. It's like one hour drive from my own. And we have a great team there, great coaches, great sparring partners. We go on training camps also uh, sometimes uh, to other places for sparring. It's great. I have everything what I need, I have there. So it's great. I have like my strength conditioning coach also back in um, when I trained in, uh, I trained in Marbella. 
And um, I still work with a strength conditioning coach. He sent me all the programs. I do my boxing and sparring with an egg. It's perfect. Everything's perfect. So in your relatively brief career, you've uh, you already had uh, some interesting experiences. Uh, you've gone abroad a couple of times. Obviously, you've been over here to the UK. And in December, yeah. fight against Lidard, you were on uh, like a really big show. So is it fair to mm -hmm. say that? the occasion for you, it's not going to be a factor. Yeah, I think it's never going to need to be a factor because it's it's about the fight. When you're in the ring, it's now, you're not focused on the big arena or a small, small arena or a small gym or whatever. It's just the ring. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But your opponent, Oli, uh, he has generally been sort of just fighting locally on the small hall level. Um, so, yeah, in that sense, you think you've got the more experience uh yeah maybe maybe but like i said it's just we need to do it in the ring and i think the ring is always the same size if it is in a small gym or a big arena yeah but maybe it's going to be like a bit of um a better for me that i have seen it all and I've done it so maybe yeah tell us uh, what what was the most important thing you took away from the george liddard fight because georgie is like one of the top prospects in the UK, got quite a good amateur pedigree. Yeah. He, just this past weekend, he's already looking, his next fight is going to be for a title. So would you say uh, the fight with George was quite a jump up in levels and you learned a lot from that? Yeah, of course, it was a jump up in levels. It was short notice fight too. But most of what I learned about, of what I learned, what I experienced from this fight, I tasted the level and I, and I knew when I'm like 100%, I want, I want to be there. So it's it was like it was a tough fight, but it also was like a bit of motivation that I know like I need to work hard to to get to that level. And when I tasted it, I knew I wanted wanted more of that. So that's why after that fight, I trained hard, and now I'm happy. I'm I'm back on on a good stage. Yeah, uh, that shows you've got the real fighting heart. Because uh, from what yeah. I'm, you know, a lot of fighters first time they have a hard fight, they ask their promoters, <laughs> "Get me easy fights." So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, with, like I said, with George, what what was, uh, in terms of the boxing and in the ring, what was it that you noticed most about in, in terms of the jumping levels? Is it the, the speed of thought, how much he reads uh, reads your moves? The, is it the physical aspects, like the power, the strength? What would you say was the, the biggest factor? I think the biggest factor was, like, he started right away, and I think maybe that's what I was like, um, and I knew, like, my cardio-wise was not that good, so I I thought I need to pick my shots more, and he was like all over me. He was like jab, jab, jab. He, he, the pace was very high, and then I was like a bit like ah. And then I, I, yeah, I knew I needed to do something. So then I come forward, 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 and pushed everything to. And then I, yeah, I, it's really like in the, in the last round, like everybody sees the the one round that I like. Um, how do you say it? Like um, be my real self. Like I, then I wanted to throw punches. But I think like the most of the stars, like just the, the start, he started like right away and keep the pace high. And I think that's the, what I was um, most difficult for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So it's a, a combination of factors. Um, yeah, a combination of factors indeed. But as you said, you can only improve from, from those learning uh, experiences. Um, it, has there been any talk of whether for the winner of the... Uh, your fight is there some sort of title potentially next or no i haven't spoken about that but I, I don't know maybe maybe i hope so i hope so but that's why i need to perform real good this saturday what i will and then let's see what's next i i know for sure great opportunities will come so uh, would you say physically and mentally you're ready for 10 rounders which is what the title fights will be when you i'm ready i know i'm ready I know, 100%. Yeah. Okay, so, like you said, get through this, then uh, you can start to ask for those those title yeah. fights you're after. Um, did, does you, you and your coaching team, do you have a particular idea in mind? Uh, I, I don't know, are you, you're you looking for the sort of European route, I, I'm, I'm guessing? Yeah, it's like different because I'm not like based in the UK and uh, we need to see maybe first like, get to the smaller European titles and the bigger ones. Let's see how it goes. I I, I don't really know. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Is there any particular guys that uh, you got on, uh, got on your mind as potential opponents for the future? Nah, not really. I'm more like, you know, I need to go to Saturday and then we see what's next. I have my full focus on Ollie Edwards. I need to do this fight real good. And I know I will. And then we see what's next. I'm not like, oh, let's see off this fight, that fight, three fights ahead. I need to focus on this fight and then we see further. Yeah, very sensible because uh, we've seen recently how many fights have fallen through because uh, guys yeah. are looking at the next one. So, um, yeah. <laughs> that at hand. So, uh, yeah, have you, is it fair to say you've pretty much finished training camp now? And Yeah, yeah I finished training camp, just lost bit, getting like stretch good, like rest good, recovery good. And we move to uh, London uh, tomorrow, then a bit of uh, like uh, get ready for the weigh-in, then rest, eat, then go to show uh, Saturday. So, so you say you're flying into London tomorrow, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Um all right, so then, yeah, you'll have a, I guess, a day to just rest before the weigh-in. Yeah, but I have rest now. It's perfect. It's perfect. Everything's perfect. Yeah. And as you said, you're not struggling to make weight like you was at middleweight, so it's not a struggle that <laughs> getting to that weigh-in the day. No, before. no, no. No, 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 no. It's not going to be a struggle at all. All right, fantastic. All right, um... Is, is there anything you want to add? No, I think so, though, man. I'm looking forward to the Saturday. Hope to uh, put on a good a good performance, a good show, come out uh, as the winner. Yeah, absolutely. Me and you both. I've got a feeling uh, you and Oli might, uh, you might steal the show because uh, you're too... Yeah, man. <laughs> and, uh, when the punches start getting flown, yeah, things are going to happen. Yeah, man. I know sure it's going to be a great fight. Absolutely. Okay, Baz, thank you so much for your time this late in camp. I know it's always difficult on fight week, but um, yeah, we will see you Saturday night. And, uh, yeah, man, see you Saturday. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me and uh, see you later, man.